Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Condition Punishers today for you and me. Let me know when you hear and see me. All right. Good to go. Looks like we're good to go. Thank you. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, Kimberly. Let's get this lecture started. Today, what we are going to be talking about, learning about, is condition punishers in obedience. So, what our objectives are for today is what is a condition punisher? And we are going to learn about why is teaching a conditioned punisher useful? How do you create a conditioned punisher? Why is it underused? How is it misused? Are prerequisites for teaching a conditioned punisher? Why is this Lima compliant? And what is our goal at this particular stage of training before we can move on? So let's get started. All right. First is what is a condition punisher? Right. Condition punisher is going to be super important for us to learn. And I can tell you again, um, this is another subject that I am very passionate about because I think they're Condition punishers are not used enough and or not used correctly. So what a condition punisher is, it takes the place. Condition punisher, this is classical condition, right? Classical conditioning. So condition basically means like a learned, a learned punisher, as opposed to an unconditioned. An unconditioned punisher is something that does not need to be learned. So anything that's an unconditioned punisher is something that naturally discourages behavior to a dog. And so it can be something, you know, an unconditioned punisher can be something that we're removing from a dog. But at this point, what we're mostly teaching is an is a conditioned punisher to replay to replace something aversive that the dog does not like typically something that we are using as um, as positive punishment and you know positive punishment and negative reinforcement. So what we're going to do if we're talking about um, classical conditioning terminology is what we're going to do is we are going to take we are going to be replacing the unconditioned punisher mostly of different types of leash corrections aversives that we use with the leash in this stage, and we're going to replace it with something that's normally neutral to the dog. In this case, what I'm mostly going to be demonstrating is just the word no, spoken very calmly. But it can also be other things. It can be body language, as I will give you an example, where we could simply use um, body language to take the place of an actual aversive. So this is super important. Now, why is this useful? It is, I think the best way to explain why this is useful is to show you some actual demonstrations, why it is useful, and then it becomes very obvious. You know, when we are able to replace actual aversives with simply words or some body language, it allows us to communicate to the dog without needing to show or touch them to put them in the right behavior. And it allows us to greatly reduce the amount of side effects and, gr I mean, greatly, greatly improve um, how we are perceived as a trainer. And not only perceived how we are as a trainer, as far as being Lima, which is uh, least intrusive, minimally aversive. We truly get to use less aversives in the training 
because we are replacing them with learned aversives, basically, things that replace aversives, mostly just our, 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 our voice. Let me show you an example. Um, once you start recognizing what the condition punisher is, you will see it in all of the training that you see by any of the foundation style dog trainers. Matter of fact, like our intro video on our site starts off with an example of a condition punisher. I'm going to show you right over here. Everyone has seen this clip. As soon as my intro video on the site starts, we see a video of Nathaniel Benia. Um, um, whose business is Nate the, Nate the Dog Man. He was doing some training with me with this dog, Havoc. And we're doing protection training in the video. And what happens is he has his dog. I'm in a bite suit in the beginning of this video. And there's, there's a, a camera on me. There's a, like a GoPro right on my chest. So you don't see me. We just see the close-up of Havoc over here. And what happens is he's doing obedience. He like sends Havoc. Then he makes Havoc do like a down. And then... He tells Havoc to go into a sit position, but Havoc is so excited and he's a Dutch Shepherd, he basically misfires and goes to bite me. But Nate is able to just calm, not calmly, you know, he says it quick, he says the word no, and Havoc understands that no means wrong, right? Without Nate having to physically do any type of aversive or punishment to him to tell him that he was wrong. So it is really great for honest mistakes. So watch in this clip right in the beginning, you can see how it really is useful in these intense situations. Watch this right here. It's right in the beginning of this video. Right, sit, no, good, sit. Pocket. Good, all right. So it's a great example, right? And I'll show you that, show you that again. We go much slower. So you can see this happens really quick, right? Um, Havoc sit, no. Nope. All right, so he told Havoc sit, but what happened is Havoc was in a down, he told him sit. He saw Havoc was moving forward to bite me. But simply by saying the word no, he was able to communicate to Havoc because Havoc learned to condition Punisher that he was wrong and Havoc threw on the brakes and you hear Nate immediately basically tell him, good boy, he's right. And then gives him, then gives him the bike command. So it happens really quickly. Um, but that's what a condition punisher is. Sit. No. Good. Sit. Pocket. Ooh. All right. And this really helps us with doing our advanced training. I'm going to give you another example, too, over here. This is a video, and I have a story behind it, too. I mean, all the dogs that foundation-style dog trainers um, teach know their condition, know their condition punishers. But here, there's a video over here I'll show you with a wolf that we trained, and a little story, you know, a little mini story over here, how the wolf was on... TV, um, and how by teaching the wolf condition punishers, not only did it make the wolf trainable, um, it allowed the dog, the wolf, to be on TV and go right underneath the noses of purely positive dog trainers that assumed that the wolf was trained all with positive reinforcement, even though we were using condition punishers right under right underneath the, the nose of the, of the television program. So watch over here. This is Elo, and... Let me do a couple recalls with her, okay? Sure. Okay. Elo, come. Good girl. All right, so that's what the recall is supposed to look like. Now what we're going to see here, too, is she's gonna send Elo back. Um, Good. And what's going to happen is she's going to do another recall, but Elu, Elu doesn't finish the recall. She only goes about three quarters of the way over here. Watch this. Elu, come. No. Okay, so did you hear that? Elu didn't finish it, and um, the handler over here, she was able to just tell... Elu, no, instead of actually punishing the wolf with anything aversive. Elu understands that that means the same thing is wrong, reacts the same way, 
and finishes the recall. Mm. This side. Good girl. You look great. So cute. And what happens is dogs, canines, wolves, they make honest mistakes they make honest mistakes they get distracted they're not perfect and we can we can tell these animals that they're wrong right without fully without having to give them an aversive and over here while the wolf is playing we also see a conditioned punisher being used let's say pause i think our Labrador is looking good. for a place to, to pee. Recall? Let's see. Yeah. They, they, they play differently than yeah. dog, her and dog. Oh, jeez, my wife. Like standoffish. Man. He's not as like... So we have one more you recall here. Good girl. No. Good girl. Good girl. So, so this was able to quickly fix, you know, quickly fix the, the, the wolf's behavior. And you can see we're not using, I mean, the wolf, training the wolf, the wolf ate just nothing but raw food and wouldn't even take like dog treats really. So the, we couldn't really even use much food reward with this wolf. And this wolf came from, did come, you know, this, this woman, she was, Training, there's a whole backstory behind it, but um, you can't slack with a wolf, right? You can't cut corners with uh, with a wolf. She was bitten by the wolf before she came to us because she was using a trainer that did not use condition punishers or a bunch of other things, right? It wasn't really a, a complete system. But going back to this story and how this is also useful, is condition punishers go beyond just um, verbals. Um, I did speak about my experience. We don't have to go, you know, go into it too much. My experience when I was asked to to help out um, in a couple of episodes of it's me or the dog. But most people know Victoria Stillwell is, you know, claims to be a purely positive trainer and there's um you know we have a whole ethics stream um about this about this experience and what's unethical in dog training and why ethics are important but there's a lot to learn from that experience but just to show you as well is um is we were able to take this wolf and have this is actually pretty funny because i found this clip over here with elu where elu is healing off leash and primarily we're using positive reinforcement but we're using conditioned punishers actually i'll go back to go back to this clip over here all right we'll show um let me make this big goes into a training room and we have earl walking with let's watch elu healing over here so this is elu learning to heal and even in the heel so the dogs do not have to get um aversive you see earl here how he takes a step to the side he's teaching this uh this german shepherd a conditioned punisher it just means that he will always make a certain a certain body movement before he would ever give an actual punishment so then the then the dog and just like elu the wolf you see where she's healing this is called a traditional heel we wanted the wolf to walk behind her so she's not tripping over her and to give the wolf more confidence, walk in scary areas that she was not in front. But the we have videos, you know, on the on the back end that show how we train the wolf and use condition punishers. This is an old video, um, but it shows how we use condition punishers to teach the heel. So we did not have to use actual punishers. Now for Elu, when we filmed this episode, it was a very hot day. And the handler was walking around with her wolf doing off leash training in front of a in front of a crew. And we hear Victoria Stillwell say, oh, look at that. That's positive reinforcement. Where in actuality, what she was seeing was conditioned punishers and it was going right underneath the nose. Like I'll show you 
We got a little clip right here. Um, so she introduces him to one of Mike and Earl's biggest success stories, Lisa and Elu, a wolf. Elu heel? She's actually in tune to Lisa. Like, Lisa slows down, she'll slow down. Now that's good healing. Would be now right there, we see Elu's going a little slow. I mean, we taught Elu to, to follow just behind the heel. But when she would go a little slow, her punishment is a conditioned punisher. We, we teach Elu that there's going to be some fast movement, and that means you're doing wrong, right? And then Elu knows if I fix, if I fix myself, um, then I get, you know, then I'm just going to get praised, and, um, and I'm good. You could get and Casper we, to do that. Good. That's what I want to do. That's real relationship. That's beautiful. Good girl. Positive good reinforcement girl. right there. Good job, Elu. All right. So we hear her talking about the positive reinforcement right there, but in actuality, she's being controlled just as much through conditioned punishers through positive, positive re reinforcement. So it gives you the ability to use conditioned punisher. It just has tons and tons of benefits, and a lot of them are going to be are going to be obvious. Is is you never have to, when you know how to use punishment the right way, especially conditioned punishers, there's never anything to hide because you truly are being Lima. You're truly training the dog so that you do not have to physically punish the dog. And you're, you're, you're being fair to the dog and you're giving the dog the benefit of the doubt when they, when they, make, when they make mistakes. So our prerequisites for um, conditioned punishers are, of course, you need to understand the phase one training, right? The phase one training with uh, with with a a dog, because if we don't have the phase one training, um, we can't even begin to communicate to the dog what is right. And of course, we need to understand our escape conditioning. So if this is if someone's just jumping in on the stream and they have not watched all these videos, these phase one videos and escape conditioning is you cannot even do the lessons that you see here, right? We really need to understand this as a prerequisite. And of course, like we explained in the previous stream on escape conditioning, you need to understand the, the leash. But this does change our full command structure, right? So this is what we're working towards. When we give a dog a full education, what we get is we're able to do these, we're able to dynamically communicate with the, the dog in such a way where we get a true, like the greatest obedience that you can technically get with the dog, where where they're obeying because of the best reward schedules and also because of the best punishment schedules that are mostly being implemented by condition punishers where you're not even using an aversive majority of the time because you thought because you taught a condition punisher so this is where we left off doing the escape conditioning, right? Where we were inviting the dog into the obedience and if the dog didn't want to obey we just started over at the beginning. Um, and it was a sign if the dog did not want to participate with us that we were probably being too aversive or we were not keeping up on our reward schedules. Here, at, here is what I suggest people do as a general test now. If you know that if, if you have a client or you are working on a dog and you're doing the escape conditioning, you do not want to introduce the condition punisher unless the dog understands the um, escape conditioning for every command that you wish to implement the conditioned punisher. Meaning if I'm gonna do a little session here with Darcy and I'm gonna be teaching the condition punisher for like the sit, the, the down, the come and the climb mostly. Now, if the dog understands the escape conditioning you will see in this video that she should respond very easily to whatever the aversive is with no confusion at all, even if you just start off doing 
the aversive in the form of just negative reinforcement. All right, watch what I do here with Darcy. This is a really good test, and I would do it with all the clients to see if they're ready to do the condition punisher. See here, a little pump up, she knows what to do. A little pump down, she knows what to do. And she doesn't seem stressed out by it. Little pump up. I'm doing a pinky yeah. just to just to show it's not about force. You should be able to do very, very light amounts. I'm just pumping toward the climb. Yeah. These are all the aversives that Darcy would experience if she disobeyed. Yeah. And she understands how to escape the aversives without being scared, without being stressed out. Yeah. All right, so I do a bunch of these over here, and you get uh, you get the idea. I put the whole videos over here. I just did a little short session, like a two-minute session, just doing pumps. So if she understands how to escape it, I can start adding the condition punisher. All right. Now, so the conditioned punisher command structure, what it's going to look like is it's still... It's not exactly our full command structure yet. And our full command structure, to show the difference of it, the biggest difference that you're going to see over here is that when the dog is fully trained, we're going to teach the dog how to completely avoid all punishment. But since we are teaching the dog the conditioned punisher, we don't want the dog to avoid, to be able to avoid the condition punisher at this point. We want to expose the dog to the condition punisher as much as possible until we are convinced that the dog understands what the condition punisher is. So in this command structure, what we are doing with the dog is basically we're going to start, we're going to do, always start off with the dog's name. We give the dogs commi the command, and if the dog does the command, we do everything we've done in the past. We're going to praise the dog. We're going to reward the dog. We're going to use whatever reward schedule that we're on. And if the dog remains in it, we release the dog and we start back over. But now what we're also going to do is if the dog does not obey. You see over here? Let me um, let me make this bigger. Yeah. Over here. If the dog does if when we, if the dog does not obey um no what we're going to do if the dog does not obey we're going to say we're simply just going to say no all right even if the dog does not even try all right that's the biggest difference between this and a complete command structure which we're going to go into next lesson all right so if the dog doesn't obey we are going to simply use the word no. And this is how you're going to see how we're creating the condition punisher using classical conditioning. No at this point really should mean nothing to the dog. But we say no to the dog, all right? Now, up here, it only goes one way. After we say no, we ask ourselves, did the dog try? to obey at this point. In the beginning, they don't. They don't even know what it means. If the dog does not even try, we do what we taught the dog for that command in the escape conditioning, in, in the con escape conditioning lesson. We, get, we repeat the command with the proper correction that the dog should not be scared of at this point. So for instance, if I say Darcy sit and she does not obey, I first say no, this doesn't happen at the same time. This is why they're separate, these are separate steps. I say no, she did not try to fix herself, all right? Um, and then I repeat the command, sit, with which you saw, whatever the proper condition punisher is for that. Then if she does it, good girl, all right? Now, if you say no, and if she tries, all right, suppose that she does try, and she still, and she happens to obey, fixes herself right over here. Yes, we just go and we praise her, right? Good girl. She avoids, you know, she's able to avoid the correction. 
Um, but we see this would actually be a sign that she's learning the condition punisher, right? That's what we're really looking for, all right? But suppose we say she doesn't obey, we say no, she tries, but she still just gets it wrong, all right? We told her sit, she didn't do it, we told her no, she goes into a down, you know, but she tried. We would just say no again. As long as she's trying, we would just keep saying no, all right, until she stops trying and then we show her what the right answer is, basically. All right, we show her what the right answer basically is, um, and that's the way it works. Now, same thing. There's two entry points to the no. There's one when we initially give the command if she doesn't do it at all. The other one is once she's during the command, during the duration. If she does not stay in the command, right here, no. We can also enter with the word no and do the same thing and it brings her back onto the path to finish in the command, all right? So this is much, here is the command structure for it, for teaching it, but it's much better to watch it in action. So what I put over here, and I'm not gonna show this whole video, um, but I'll show you, I'll show you parts to it, right? I'll show you parts to it where you can see what it looks like. It's going to be the same exact predictable command structure to to the dog. Now in the beginning right here, what we're looking for is, yeah, this is a very short clip to show you what we're looking for from the dog when we see the dog understands it. All right, watch this clip. Nice and fine. Good All right. girl. We praise her. Now here, remember in the escape conditioning, we stayed very close to the dog to make sure if she messed up, we could fix her right away. Here, you could start going further out from the dog. And now when she breaks, I say the word no first, then I slide if she doesn't try to fix herself and give her the proper correction, which you will see here, all right? Which we should say. I drop food, all right? So she goes to break, I first say no, then I go when I fix her. Fine, good girl. All right. And watching this video, just to critique myself, she looks like she may, she was probably gonna fix herself anyway there, but I'm not a perfect trainer, right? But in theory, I she broke, I say no. And then if she wasn't trying to fix herself, we would correct her. But now what we see, we'll see what it looks like when they correct themselves now on the word no. Watch Darcy here. Oops. Drop some no. food. Good girl. You see? So there I said no. Did she, oh, she was in the command, all right? Did she stay? She didn't stay. I said no. Um, did she try? Yes. Did she obey? Yes. I just praised her, all right? And this shows signs that she's understanding a condition punisher. Let's watch this a little more because we'll see another one. See what the condition punisher looks like. Yeah, good girl. Darcy Frick. Good girl. Darcy. He's eating drop treats. Good girl. No. Good girl. Darcy down. Good girl. Now here she breaks, and you'll see she'll respond correctly to the word no. No. Good girl. All right. So that's what it should look like. Let's see if we get anything else on this. I'm just throwing treats as a little distraction for her. Darcy, free. Good girl. Maybe she, I think she gives me one more over here. Right there. Right there. Good girl. Oh, no. That's it. All right. So that's basically what it should look like when they're understanding it. But this is what you have to look out for, is in this video, that first video I've noticed, 
is Darcy mostly seems to be understanding it once she's in the command and then when she breaks the command from this entry. She knows when she's in the command and then when I say no, that she goes back and she she tries and she fixes herself and we're back on this path. But you have to make sure the dog understands from both directions here. What I've noticed, um, I'm not going to show the whole video. I continue doing um, the lesson with Darcy. And I noticed sometimes when I gave her the initial command and she did not obey and I told her no, she did not try to then fix herself. So what you have to be aware of is that the dogs may perceive it sometimes is just to sort of stop and go back to what they're doing, but not necessarily if you give them a command and they don't even try at all to, to fix themselves, to correct themselves, all right, from this entry. Now, I'm not going to play this whole video over here, but it gives you an example of what it would look like if the dog does not really have all the benefits that you would want to get from the conditioned punisher at this point. So I'm going to skip ahead to about a minute here. Darcy down. No. Good right. girl. Now that's what we're looking for. All right. I think I got one from her. I told her down. She didn't go down. I told her no. And then she finished the down. Let's watch that again. Darcy down. No. Good girl. All right, that's this entry. Darcy down. Did she obey? No. I said no. Did she try? Yes. Did she get it right? Yes. I praised her. All right. So I actually thought at the beginning of this lesson that I was just going to kind of do a demo of what it should look like. But then I noticed that Darcy was not very, very consistent with this. And I say this is a longer video. I'm not going to do. Whoops. Wrong one. I'm not going to do the whole one, but as I was doing this lesson, I'll just jump ahead more. Is there a lot of times where I'm saying no and she's not really trying? Darcy, come. Good girl. Good girl. It's very hot. Darcy, out. Good girl. Darcy, sit. No. Sit. Good girl. So here we go. So that's an example of her not trying Darcy on the word down. no. Good girl. Darcy, sit. No. Sit. Good girl. Okay. So we don't have to play this whole one. And she was kind of hot. And... I was watching her body language. I was getting some yawns and stuff like that. And really by the end of this, she's just shot. I was trying to get, I wanted to see confirmation that she knew, especially for the sit and going into the sit and other things, that she understood the, um, the no for the initial things. And I just wasn't getting it from her. Darcy, down, no, down, good girl. Darcy, sit, good girl. Good girl. Darcy, break. Right. You're done. Alright, so I ended a session over here. Now, the point I'm making here is with training, is you need to use these checklists over here. Alright? With just like with um, escape conditioning, you need to know for each command, like I knew starting that session with Darcy that 
She, you know, she knew what the pump was for leash manners, for climb, for sit, for down, um, for, for, yeah, for these particular, and, and come that I was doing. Now, condition punisher, I was seeing, I am not going to check it off and say that she knows it unless I see her responding correctly for each of those commands, for any command that I want to see she's checked off with from both entries, like I said, from this direction and this direction. If she does not know both the entry points, then most likely I'm not going to be able to be minimally aversive with her. There will be times where if she understood that condition punisher and she is obviously trying and doesn't have a reason to disobey that I would have to use an actual aversive instead of just a conditioned aversive with her. So that's why those checklists, checklists are important and you have to see it with your own eyes and you need to know what you're looking for. All right. So after I was didn't get really what I wanted from her, she was just shot. It was very, very hot yesterday. I took out the, the big boy. All right. To see, um, to see with Orfeo, if I can show a bit more what you're looking for. And I was like, and I, and I put up mental note. It's like, oh, I got to work more with Darcy. I don't think she understands the the condition punisher. And, even, and so since I want to use her, she does not really. I dabbled in some phase three with Darcy, but she really doesn't know it. You know, in the last time I was doing the course, um, I want to use her for more instructional videos, but she needs to know her checklist. Now here, this is, or took out or fail, and you're going to see a little bit more of what you're looking for to know that you are, that the dog understands a condition punisher. So let's watch your fail a bit here to show you an example. Hold you in your own. Mm -hmm. Fail, fine. Good boy, no. Good boy. You see that reaction for Morfeo? I told him to climb, he's excited. He just overshot it. A simple no. He understands very clearly. I did not have to take the leash and like do a pump or do any type of aversive. I told him no and he responded exactly as if I physically corrected him. All right. Um, I'm leaving this whole session. We're not going to watch the whole seven minute session, but you can watch it on your own to see what it to see what it looks like. Good but at this stage in the training, we're looking for a dog to mostly respond because of the phase one. He's still on his thin schedules, but I'm going to try to mess him up. All right. In this stage, you try to do, you should be faded off the body language. So I'm going to do different presentations, right? I'm going to turn my back to the dog. I'm going to try to, conf I'm going to bend over and say the word sit, where dogs associate that we're going down. I'm gonna do things just to test him, to see if he'll make honest mistakes and see if he responds correctly to the word no. Another thing that we'll, you'll notice in this session is on the command structure, if the dog say is in a down, I do not want him to guess what I'm gonna tell him when I just say his name. So you'll see if Orfeo is in a down, if I say Orfeo and I'm gonna tell him to sit, and he is, I don't want him to assume that I freed him. He just jumps off of there. Or maybe I'm going to tell him to come. And I say, or fail, I don't want him to assume that I say sit and jump the gun. So often you will also use the word no when you say the dog's name and they jump the gun. And we say no, and we want them to fix themselves. So these are the type of things that that I'm testing with Orfeo when I'm, when I'm working with him. All right. So he's going to be on his reward schedules. I'm mixing him up. I'm pretty much doing the same commands that I was doing with Darcy, just like a sit down, a come, and and a climb to keep sit. things simple. No. Sit. Good. You see? So here, did a condition Stay punisher, down. which he didn't obey. Good boy. No. Down. Good boy. Right. And that's what I'm talking about. I'll test him on his name. I don't want him to jump. Good boy. <laughs> I'll jump ahead over here because I know we have 
Let's jump around to about the four minute mark here. So here I try to fool him, trying to trigger honest mistakes. He jumped the gun a bit there. I was giving it to him. So, what I was looking for, I'm going to jump ahead, is I never really handle Orfeo. That's Judy's dog. But I kind of got what I was looking for now, just a little bit of work with me, is I'm convinced he knows his word, knows, like especially towards the end over here. I did a double no, where you can see he keeps trying. I'm not using perfect form, but you'll get the idea. Watch what happens Ayo, here. Climb. Good boy. <laughs> or Ayo, sit. No. So see there, I told him sit. He didn't get it right. Who knows what he was thinking? I told him no, and he actually still gets it wrong, but he tried. He goes into the no. I mean, he goes into the down. Perfect form would actually be I would have just stood there and said no again. I was going to go over and just help him and fix him. But since he tried, I realized, oh, I could give him another no to tell him he's wrong again. So I start moving up and I tell him no again. Watch this. No. Good boy. Feel free. And he fixes himself. Now, this is what we're looking for for the dog. You know, we give him, he doesn't obey, he gets it wrong. We tell him no, he corrects himself. And so the condition, you can think of the conditioned punisher when you're teaching it this way, more almost like a conditioned correction, all right? Um, I'm gonna get into that to explain that there's differences of how people use conditioned punishers. We want him to respond to our conditioned punisher the same way they respond to our unconditioned punisher. But if you train the dog using the escape conditioning in this style and the dog understanding the words, the reaction, if we want the same reaction from the aversive, we're, we want the dog to not just simply stop behavior, the, it's a correction, it's a punisher where the dog has to do something and fix themselves in order for it to go away. So we're looking for the dog to, to fix themselves. Um, if we go back over here is, but we have to look out for, just to kind of jump around over here, what we have to look out for since this has happened is um, we, we want to observe that the dog seems to get it, all right? That the dog is responding to the word no. They're not just freezing up. They're not just acting like they did something bad and just freeze to the word no. What we're looking for is that the dog responds to it. They're responding the same way as if you were given the, the aversive to the dog, responding. But I put this here too in this video um, gives an example. You got to be careful of body language versus verbal in this case. Here with Orfeo, that's what we're basically looking for. But I would still want to make sure is um, that I am not doing what I'm saying no. You want to avoid moving on the word no because we want to make sure he's responding to the word no and not necessarily to the fact that watch this that I was moving, he saw the movement that looked like I was gonna punish him here. All right, watch this. All right. So the first condition punisher is good right here. All right, so we send him to the, send him to the mat. All right, so he doesn't do it. I say no, I'm not doing any body language. That's how you correctly do a condition punisher. If we want him to, 
if we want him to associate the word no with the associated punishment, we we want to keep it controlled. I don't want to be doing anything at the same time, all right? When I said no, I wanted him to sit. I did not want to say no and be sliding into the sit at the same time. So I was about, so right here, watch what happens. Say, I'm moving forward here as I say the second no. So we cannot assume. No. Good boy. All right. Since I was stepping forward and saying no, technically, we'd want to make sure that we're not assuming hey, free. that he completely knows that. But you get the idea of what we're looking for. All right. So if we were doing Orfeo over here, I certainly saw I would be able to skate. I would be able to check off in the, in the condition punisher. I definitely can say for sure he knows the condition punisher for for climb. And I would see if you watch the whole video there, it's pretty safe to assume that he understands it for sit and down. And I mean, I know for sure he knows it for come and things like that. You have to test these dogs out. If they don't know it, you're not going to be able to use it. And that's why, if you notice, I'm jumping, I'm showing you ahead here, phase three. Phase three is when we're doing off-leash stuff and doing stuff around higher distractions. And we're using higher levels of aversives that the dog definitely wants to avoid. And, and things like e-collars and stuff like that. You do not want to be teaching your dog your conditioned punishers down here. The dog should understand it way before you even think about this. Because... We need our condition punishers for honest mistakes that the dog is going to be making, right? We do not want to be doing more motivational aversives when the dog truly made an honest mistake. So that's why condition punishers are over here. Escape conditioning is going to be repeated because we're using different training tools and stuff that they're not going to know how to escape. So that's why we need to understand that over there at, at that point. So um, at this point, though, what does is we're starting to use the most reliable obedience in the most diverse situations. It's not just an opinion. It's based on science. Once you hit this point, even though we're doing this is phase two, we're teaching. You got to use a teacher's voice. And if you notice in these lessons, there is nothing ever in the training process that you should be doing that seems embarrassing that if that you would be scared to show someone because they would think you're being abusive or unfair to the dog or something like that. The dog should always be enjoying the training session with you because you never stop doing the variable reward schedules. You never thin it out to a point where you're not getting the impression that the dog does not want to be there and does not want to participate. You could see if you go back, you know, and you watch the videos with Darcy, you'll see that she's hot, she's taking treats and stuff like that. That's why as a prerequisite, you want to know dog body language and stuff like that. You see the dog is getting stressed out, um, things like that. You have to adjust either where, you know, we're adjusting the training session or, or, or ending the training session. And in her case, she was getting hot. So that's why you never want to forget our triangle that's over here, right? When we're doing training, we want to make sure that we're being ethical and so training is up here, but in ethics, which is which we went over first, that's why Lima is down there. Lima is down there is before we do the training, our training is based on being least intrusive, minimally aversive as possible. So it is built. That's why our training plans every step of the way are plan are are designed that if the dog can accomplish it with positive reinforcements, reasonable, we're going to do it with that. If we're going to use aversives, we are going to teach it in the most minimally aversive way in order to do it. Um, we're not going to not use aversives if, if it could potentially mean that we're not going to be able to enjoy our dogs or our dogs are not going to um, be with us. Like a dog like Orfeo, he's a big, strong dog. I love that I could bring him to the vet. I could bring him into my classroom at the school. And he is so well behaved and he does his obedience and I could put him in a place on the other side of the room. I would never be able to bring him in to do these things if I did not use aversives. But because I am going to be Lima in, in ethics is, is I am not going to not use aversives if it would prevent me from being able to take him places because he's a big, strong dog and I can't just give up. He's not going to just listen to 
because of treats the whole time. The wolf is another example too. Now, ethology, right? We need to know ethology. We need to know body language because we need to know if our dog is getting overly stressed out. As you saw with Darcy, if you go back and watch the Darcy video, you see there's some yawning and stuff like that. So I backed up, I slowed down. I did much more affection to her when you watch it. So all of this stuff, all right, is gonna work up to the, to the training. Now, we gotta get to our last objectives here so we know. So why is this LEMA compliant? It is LEMA compliant because we are. We are truly, I assure you that I do not know of any other way to train a dog with less aversives and get the benefits of using punishment, all right? Now remember, punishment is not a replacement for positive reinforcement. It's like a car. The brake pedal is not a replacement for the gas pedal. One is encouraging behavior, one is discouraging behavior in training. Just like a gas pedal encourages us to go forward, the brake pedal you know, uh, encourages the vehicle to stop, right? It's two different things. So it's Lima compliant because it is, we are doing training that allows us to be less intrusive because we're gonna be able to bring the dog in more situations to be with us, but we're making sure that we are being least aversive as possible. So if you follow the command structure that I show in the steps, if I ever find a way up to this point that is less aversive and less intrusive, I will change it. If anyone ever finds a way, make sure you show me. But I assure you, right now, this 5.0 course, it is as Lima as you could find in the world, to my, to my knowledge. Are you Lima compliant if you are not using conditioned punishers? I put this here because I believe that if you are not using conditioned punishers in your training, which works to conditioned punishers, it's conditioned, it's a punisher, it discourages. If there are times where you need to discourage behavior and you are not using conditioned punishers and you have to use an aversive, any aversive is more aversive than no aversive, right? The no aversive, I don't believe that you can technically say that you're Lima compliant. That's my, that's my opinion. So that's why I think it's very important that if we want to call ourselves Lima compliant as dog trainers that use, that use punishment in order to be le least intrusive, um, is you need to know how to use your condition punishers. Other things over here that are very important is why is it underused? You will notice that condition punishers are grossly underused in training, not only professional tr dog training and all training. Now I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you why it is underused. And if we understand why it's underused and why you don't see it as much, it helps us to know why we should use it. Is one is dog trainers that only do positive dog training. They call themselves purely positive dog trainers and don't even use the word no or stuff like that, all right? If someone has only learned about positive dog training and for various reasons, other because lack of exposure, um, because they just have the wrong idea about it, it could be any reason in the world, is if they do not use punishment, they obviously are not gonna use a conditioned punisher because it is a punisher. So you just see people that didn't even learn how to use it and don't know the benefits of it and don't know that it really does not have to be that bad, okay? Another reason why we don't see it used a lot is in competitive dog training. I know this from going to a very expensive, very, very um, well-known school um, for dog trainers. It was considered one of the best in the world, but it was based off of the training techniques from a competitive dog trainer that made a really good name for himself. Now, what is something you are not allowed to use in competition? You cannot tell the dog no while you're competing in dog training. I don't know of any competitive um, dog training sport or competition where you're allowed to use the word no. I spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and never 
even though I could look back and think of times where there were conditioned punishers happening almost by accident, even though it was not mentioned to us, it was not something that was focused. We were not really taught, this is what a conditioned punisher is, this is how you use it, so you do not have to punish the dog. Now, because you do not see it, it's not in your face with competitive dog training. Just like in competitive dog training, we don't even see praise used that much. We usually hear the word yes, we hear clickers, stuff like that, because praise is not really used in competition. Because a lot of military and working dogs, and even a lot of professional trainers, get their education from a lot of trainers that made names for themselves in competitive dog training, the lack of of focus on condition punishers trickles down even into a lot of working dogs and you know a lot of balanced dog people call themselves balanced dog trainers where they're not just using positive dog training they're using punishment but they are mostly mimicking things that worked well in competition where you could say the word no so then what you get are a lot of dogs that potentially are getting a lot more aversives than necessary so, and it's not just about being self-righteous, right? When we're talking about condition punishers and the benefits, it's 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 not just, I say, it's not just about, oh, I'm using less punishment. You can, as a trainer, get longer training sessions from the dog. You can give handlers better control where they don't have to be pushing a button or using a leash to correct their dog, less side effects, less handler aggression, um, a better user experience, especially for a professional dog trainer, right? They're, they're, you are going to have more long-term clients if they enjoy the experience training their dog. It is not just about the end results. It's about, it's about the process, which brings me to, I do see some trainers that are trying. So a lot of trainers credit, and I'm, I'm certainly not saying only the trainers here that are doing foundation style dog training are using them correctly, all right? I'm just saying what I see mainstream is I do see other trainers using it in a way that I would call it like a poisoned marker or a conditioned aversive. And I'll explain the difference between what... I'm teaching you here, it's more of a non-aversive correction or a conditioned corrector, right, to be more accurate. So a lot of trainers, they understand how useful it is to mark a dog that the dog did something wrong for something that they cannot physically punish the dog for right away. So what they do is the dog does something wrong and they just say like no and like hit the dog over the head with a bonker or say no and just correct the dog with an e-collar or say no and just correct the dog with the leash. And then they never get past that stage and they tell their clients or trainer apprentices that when you say no, it has to always be followed through with an actual punishment. So then what happens is it never you're never getting the use of it from what it is. The condition punisher is meant to replace the actual punisher if you're using it the right way. But in a way, ideally, that the dog corrects themselves, that you get the behavior that you want from the dog. So use the wrong way, and it should make sense to you. If someone just says, like, no, and just gives the dog a correction for doing a wrong behavior, no becomes, and they do it all the time, and then occasionally when they can't punish with something physical, they say no, they get poison markers where simply the dog just cringes or stops their behavior that they're doing, but doesn't necessarily fix itself, you know, do, do an action of what it's supposed to do. So you'll see a lot of that, all right? You'll see a lot of it and it just does not become, it's not as useful and it's definitely not not Lima, all right? It's definitely not going, going to be Lima. So know the difference. You'll see no, where they always punish um, at the end, and they're not even really looking for the dog does the right behavior. And there's a lot of side effects. You can I've seen with my own eyes, even at a very expensive school, when things were done in that fashion, 
where if a dog heard no and they automatically get punished, some of the dogs would hear no, assume there's no way to avoid being punished, and even do fight or flight. Some will even run when they say no, or even show aggression towards, towards the handler. Or you might just get simply a dog that just cringes and act like it was just physically gotten aversive that did not really help show the dog what to do, all right? So remember, if you do it the way that I'm showing and you do the escape conditioning first and you are telling the dog what they're supposed to be doing, the no should, it's gonna be conditioned, it's conditioned to what we taught the dog already, that when you hear that no, you can fix yourself. And if you do that behavior, you don't have to get the aversive and the help. And keep in mind, as you see in phase two, even with that, with Orfeo, if you watch that video, I'm doing, it almost does not matter what training collar you are using. When you have that engagement from the dog, even with a big dog like him, I can use fingers, little pressure, pumps, fingers. Never have to even use wrist, elbow, especially not arm, doing, doing anything. If you have good technique, it's incredibly non-aversive. Um, with, uh, with the dog. Let's see what we got here. Also, what is our goal at this particular stage of training? What should we observe, all right? What we want before we can move on is for every command that you would like to use a conditioned punisher is we want to observe when you do the conditioned punisher at both entries, all right? Going back to our command structure. Either initially if the get if the dog gets it wrong, or if they did not remain in the duration at both entry points to the condition punisher, that they show that they can do, they can with the word no, they can do the proper correction. They can correct themselves instead of you needing to use an aversive to correct the dog. All right, things to watch out for is mostly if you want your condition punisher to be body language, make sure you're using the body language, which we didn't go too much into that lecture because we're gonna have to do more videos just on heel. With the heel in particular, we just use the body language and that's what we were showing with the wolf when she was healing in, that, in the TV show. And if you want to use verbal, isolate the verbal. Do not move the same time you say the word no. Say no first, then move. So the dog makes the connection. The dogs will learn whatever you teach them. And body language is the dog's first language. So if you are saying something and doing a movement at the same time, the dog will pay attention to their primary language first which is the body language. So for those no's, try not to move. No one's gonna be perfect. I haven't watched my videos like, oh, I should have not, I should have not moved, right? But that's why you critique, You watch, that's your job, watching the clients, make sure they're not moving, critique them, they usually don't realize. And we wanna see the dog gets the right behavior. And then that will bring us to the point where we will be able to move to avoidance conditioning and things really start to become beautiful at that point all right as scary as it sounds when we're using a full dog training trinity we call where we're using our pre-mac principle we're using a variable word schedule and we're doing a continuous punishment schedule doesn't that sound scary continuous just means the dog will always get punished when they disobey. But if you watched these training sessions, this is the first time you saw what a continuous punishment schedule looks like. Even though I'm using condition punishers, it's a continuous punishment schedule. There's always a punishment when the dog disobeys. And that's why when you watch these whole videos, um, you see the dog almost always trying or it's honest mistakes. They just know it's not there's always gonna be a reward coming at some point, and there's always discouragement for not obeying. So we're hitting things both from both sides over here. Um, 
which makes the charts making the training very reliable, even at this stage, in whatever controlled situation you have brought your dog, you brought your dog into. All right. Then of course, pre Mac principle. You know, you release the dog. We played some ball with him at the end of that, at the end of that um, short session. All right. So you can see where we're going. We're here, condition punisher. We got avoidance conditioning. That prepares us for phase three, where we really do high level distractions. And phase four, generalization is doing it in different areas and making sure your client or even you understand the best schedules to maintain. All right, so that's all we got to today. Let me see, it looks like we have some questions over here. Let me see if we have any questions. Um, oh, I see, I see some, some chatter over, over here. All right, so I'm going to end this and I will be back Wednesday for live, live Q&A. Thanks for everyone for tuning in.